As we've said on this show before, there are way too many similarities between the violent right-wing riots in our capital back in January 2021 and in Brazil's on Sunday. But one of the most important similarities is that neither attack could have happened without right-wing organizers rallying support on social media and on Twitter specifically. As The Washington Post reports, researchers in Brazil said Twitter in particular was a place to watch because it is heavily used by a circle of right-wing influencers, allies of the former President Bolsonaro who continue to promote election fraud narratives. Elon Musk did not own Twitter when our capital was attacked two years ago. But he does now, as rioters sympathetic to the election lies of the former Brazilian president stormed government buildings on Sunday, Musk wrote this on Twitter. I hope that the people of Brazil are able to resolve matters peacefully. Well, I think we all hope that. Good tweet, Elon. But just about a month before the riot, it was Elon Musk on Twitter spreading talking points just like the ones from the election deniers. Replying, he loves replying, to a right-wing personality, Musk wrote, I've seen a lot of concerning tweets about the recent Brazil election. If those tweets are accurate, it's possible that Twitter personnel gave preference to left-wing candidates. There are many reasons Elon Musk reminds me of Donald J. Trump. One reason is that his tweets are not just tweets. They often turn into policy. They have real-world impact. Remember that funny bot that would superimpose Trump tweets on White House letterheads? When it comes to Twitter and the Brazil riot, well, we can't just talk about what Elon Musk said on the platform. We need to talk about what he did to the platform. Before Musk bought Twitter, the site had entire teams dedicated to what they called content moderation. Among other things, staff would look out for posts that spread misinformation or incited violence. Elon Musk gutted those teams. This is reporting from Politico. Since Elon Musk took over Twitter in late October, the world's richest man has slashed the internal teams in charge of combating misinformation, including individuals individuals in charge of the company's oversight in Brazil, according to two people with knowledge of those layoffs who spoke on the condition of anonymity. The events here in Washington on January the 6th, 2021, happened despite Twitter having guardrails like content moderation. Thanks to Musk, a lot of those guardrails are gone in the US, in Brazil, and around the world. But Musk isn't just removing guardrails, he's also bringing back, bringing back the very election deniers who helped pave the way for the violence. Last week, former Trump national security adviser Mike Flynn got his account reinstated in time to tweet on the second anniversary of the Capitol attack. Quote, I want to personally thank Elon Musk for all he's doing to help protect our basic human rights, especially our freedom of speech. And then there is Ali Alexander, who organized a number of Stop the Steal events after the 2020 election and later described himself as a VIP at the rally near the White House on January the 6th, 2021, where Trump told supporters who he knew were armed to march on the Capitol and fight like hell. Let me read a bit from Ali Alexander's deposition before the January 6th committee. This transcript came out just a few days ago. Question, which social media platforms did you use to promote the events on January the 6th? Answer, primarily Twitter. Question, primarily Twitter? Answer, yes. Ali Alexander was banned from Twitter after the Capitol insurrection, so he didn't have that platform at his disposal ahead of the attack in Brazil. But that didn't stop him from exporting his Stop the Steal message to right-wingers there. On Donald Trump's social media site, the one Trump launched after being banned from Twitter, Ali Alexander posted things like, take to the streets, brothers of Brazil, military, stand by. And as the riot unfolded, he posted, do whatever is necessary. Love you all. Ali Alexander lost his Twitter account after helping incite an insurrection in Washington. He got it back after cheering on one in Brasilia. Now, maybe the timing is just a coincidence. After all, he said last month that he had spoken to Musk and apparently gotten some assurance that his account was coming back. I got I to gotta reintroduce myself to the world. I just talked to Elon a little while ago, I need to, I'm going to get back on Twitter soon. Yada, yada, yada. I'm making moves. Yeah. The guy who used primarily Twitter to help undermine a free and fair American election. He talked to Elon and now has his account back along with Michael Flynn. Oh, and yes, Donald J. Trump. Meanwhile, American and Brazilian democracy remain under attack. Joining me now, Washington Post tech reporter Drew Harwell. He's reported extensively on Musk's takeover of Twitter and had his own Twitter account taken down and then restored after Elon Musk took over the site. Drew, thanks for coming on the show. Even with content moderation in place, the capital insurrection still happened in January 2021. If Twitter still had its Brazil content moderation team in place, could what we saw on Sunday 
have been prevented or at least scaled back. I mean, what do we know at this point about how Twitter provided a platform for the organizers of Sunday's riot? You have to wonder what one specific content moderator would do, but you do know from looking at the January 6th testimony and seeing what we saw in Brazil that these things do matter. I mean, Twitter as a place where people are rallying, organizing, stirring each other up, talking about, you know, the senator secrets of a stolen election, these things matter. They, they rally people to a cause in a way that uh, these other sort of fringe platforms don't do. So, you know, for for that team to be gutted in Brazil and for Elon himself to be sort of sowing doubt around the election, you, you do have to wonder how much of this could have been avoided without that kind of social media um, pouring gas onto the flames. And Drew, we heard that clip from Ali Alexander saying he got some sort of personal assurance from Musk that he would get his account back. He is now back on Twitter and tweeting away. What does your reporting tell you about Elon Musk's direct and personal role in these various different accounts being restored. We see him online always chatting to, replying to far-right personalities, election deniers, conspiracy theorists. But behind the scenes, he's talking to them too personally, the world's richest, second richest, whatever, billionaire. He has time to chat to people like Ali Alexander about their personal Twitter account. Seems a bit below his pay grade. One would think, right? And you, you you see him having these conversations even on Twitter with with these people. You know, the there is a very clear sort of political bent to the people he's engaging with uh, on Twitter, and a lot of them are on, on on the right. It's it's ironic because you know Elon took over Twitter with this very sort of highfalutin you know um, pledge to be very independent, free speech absolutist. You know, his whole cause was saying that Twitter was ideologically biased. And yet, you know, he's directly engaging with these people who are very far right, very fringe, and yeah. actively adding them back onto the platform, while at the same time, you know, our reporting has shown, you know, even from the notes he's, uh, you know, the notes of people that they're pulling down off the platform, including sort of people on the left, um, including journalists, he has specifically, you know, uh, directed them to be suspended on the platform. So, you know, it, it's Elon's platform. He, he, he paid a lot of money for Twitter, and he is really actively, aggressively shaping it into his his own ends. And, you know, there, he is the, the rule maker now, and he is bending it to become this platform that um, satisfies all of his desires and, and takes down all of his grudges. Yeah, and I should point out to our viewers, um, when we talk about Elon Musk engaging with right-wing or, or far-right-wing personalities online, we're not talking about Kevin McCarthy or Mitch McConnell. He's engaging with people like Kat Turd 2 and Tom Fitton and other conspiracy theorists. Um, in fact, yesterday he had Alex um, Berenson, the vaccine denier. Uh, he handed him a bunch of Twitter files. So that's where Twitter is right now. Drew, you mentioned journalists having their accounts uh, taken down. Your account was briefly taken down after Musk accused a bunch of journalists, including yourself, of sharing his private information, his, lo his location, his whereabouts, putting his life in danger. Uh, your account appears to be back online, but do you have access to it? What's the latest on all of that madness? Uh, no, I still don't have access to it. It's been almost a month. Uh, journalists from me at The Washington Post, but also The New York Times, CNN, independent journalists remain suspended on the platform. Yeah, he, he said that we were posting assassination coordinates. We, we were not. I mean, we were posting uh, public data about flights. Every plane is, is, is tracked online. Um, but yeah, we remain suspended. And, you know, we are not able to get onto the platform until we delete a specific piece of journalism that he, he doesn't like. Um, so we're not doing that. Um, but this goes to show, you know, Elon is actively bringing people on who, who sow disinformation back onto Twitter. And all of these people were not initially banned because of their politics. They were banned because they were spreading actively harmful disinformation exactly. about COVID. They were stirring up incitement of violence. I mean, there were there were clear deliberations beyond why they were knocked off the platform yes. to begin with. Now, journalists are being knocked off for sharing public, accurate information of the kinds of journalism that we should, have, should be celebrating in this country. So uh, I, I think that says a lot about what Elon's priorities are. Yeah, General Flynn was not banned from Twitter because of his position on income tax rates. Um, I would point out also, and Drew, I think it's outrageous that you haven't got your account back. I think the assassination coordinate stuff was complete nonsense. And uh, one reason I love Twitter was the response from folks when Elon Musk posted a uh, picture of himself at the World Cup final in Doha, uh, and Twitter roundly pointed out that he had posted his own assassination coordinates. 